If you're into hot rods or racing like we are, a ring and pinion swap is a task you'll have to visit eventually. Whether it be from changing your camshaft in your motor and moving your cruise RPM higher, or you've put larger tires on that 4 before, effectively killing your bottom end power. Maybe you've had a part failure due to high mileage, or you've overpowered components that were never designed to withstand that beating you've been giving them. Whatever the case, we want to make sure you're well informed before buying your new parts. The first and probably most important step in this process is correct axle identification. Due to the multitude of axle types and swapping possibilities, it's always best to get under the vehicle and put some eyes on what's there. Most times, it's as easy as counting the rear cover bolts and comparing the gasket outline to the chart we have attached on all ring and pinion sets on the Summit Racing website. Next, it's important to know what gear ratio is currently installed in the axle. In some cases, there will be a tag attached to the rear cover that will be stamped with this info. If you are driving a late model vehicle, another way is to seek assistance from a local car dealer where they may be able to decipher an option code or VIN number, though neither of these options takes into account the possibility that the gear may have already been swapped. Ultimately, the best method is to physically count the gear teeth on both the ring and the pinion and with a little math arrive at the current ratio. For instance, if you have 41 ring gear teeth and 15 pinion teeth, 41 divided by 15 equals a 273 ratio. This also helps to identify what series carrier you might have if you're working on a GM or Dana axle and ensures the correct thickness ring gear is shipped to you. Okay, now it's time to choose your new gear ratio. There is more information needed to make this decision correctly. Things like vehicle weight, vehicle use, and performance goal. A heavy vehicle needs a higher numeric ratio to accelerate quickly. A car used for racing with a tall slick and a quarter mile racetrack will definitely use a higher numeric ratio for the quickest acceleration. A vehicle whose goal is fuel economy might use a lower numeric ratio to achieve lower cruising RPM and better MPG. A key point to keep in mind here is the RPM window your motor will operate in. Choosing a ratio that has the motor working outside of its power window can cause sluggish bottom end performance or running out of power at the end of the track. There is a calculator on the Summit Racing website that will assist you in pinpointing the proper gear ratio. When using an automatic transmission with a stall converter, make sure to choose a gear ratio that puts your cruise RPM approximately 5 to 800 RPM higher than the rated stall speed to avoid excessive heat buildup and overheating the transmission. Also, remember to factor in the overdrive ratio when necessary, as this too drops engine RPM at highway speeds. Now, you've received your new parts and it's time to install them. Should you decide to tackle this job yourself, there are some things you need to know. First of all, there are some specialty tools necessary to properly install a ring and pinion set. A few examples are a pinion depth gauge, a dial indicator, and a small micrometer. You'll also need tools like a hydraulic shop press in order to press old bearings off and new bearings back on. Torque wrenches are a must along with the bearing race and seal drivers, a brass drift, and the normal sockets, wrenches, and screwdrivers you should already have. Bottom line, if you do not possess or have ready access to these tools, you cannot do this job correctly. But we can help with that here at Summit Racing. Another thing to keep in mind, just having the tools is not enough. There are specific procedures and torque specifications that must be used that vary per axle in order to install these parts correctly. This is where obtaining the correct service manual is a big help as there are three critical measurements that must be accomplished. First is pinion depth. This measurement assures that when the engine's power is applied, the gear contact patch is correct for the quietest and strongest installation possible. Second is pinion bearing preload. This measurement assures the tapered roller bearings don't run too tight or too loose in their races causing noise, undue heat, or looseness in the driveline during acceleration or deceleration while driving. And third, backlash. This measurement is best thought of as an air gap between the teeth of the ring and pinion during final assembly. It is important for part expansion due to heat and for proper lubrication of the tooth contact surface. 
Speaking of proper lubrication, it cannot be stressed enough that you follow the gear manufacturer's recommendation for gear oil. This along with proper break-in is critical to a long-lasting quiet running gear set. Hopefully you can see this job is not an easy oil or air filter change. It takes thought, know-how, tools, and a weekend for the novice builder to accomplish such a task. One more thing, this is the prime opportunity to do some other upgrades such as axles, a limited slip differential or locker, and maybe even a disc brake kit. We can help with that too here at the World Speed Shop. <laughs>